So this is um, Jeff Potter. I'm here at the 2007 um, Banff Mountain Film Festival with a great opportunity to um, speak with Araceli Segarra, who is one of the, <laughs> uh, the finest female climbers in the world, a, a woman from uh, Catalonia and Spain. Welcome. Thank you. In this series, what we're really interested in doing is um, just having conversations mm -hmm. about the, the lives of climbers, and we've had the opportunity to interview some of the, the great climbers from around the world. And um, really interested to talk to you today about um, some of your philosophies about the things that you do, what you love about the mountains. But maybe we could just start with just a, a little bit of your background, where you're from, and okay. what kind of drew you to the mountains in the first place. Um, as you say, I'm from Spain and from the north of Spain, which is a uh the region I live, it's Catalonia. But uh, I think the most interesting thing is uh, that the north of Spain, um, there is a range of mountains that they are called the Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty close to those mountains. So a little bit is um, uh, being close of uh, those mountains, finally you get a climb. Um, and also because there's a lot of tradition, trekking tradition there. Mm -hmm. um, every single little village has an alpine club, and that attracts a lot of uh, traditional, um, how do you say, hikes. Uh, they they uh, prepare or they create those courses in in autumn, so people uh, get to learn how to ice climb if there is ice, which is every every day less and less. Uh, how to rock climb, how to do cross country skiing, so all that sports. So finally, I got in touch with one of those courses when I was. Uh, 15 years mm -hmm. old, uh, like two couple of years ago, um, and um, <laughs> and I I just start uh, doing that sport through an alpine club. And did you have a family connection to the mountains as well? Um, yes and not. I mean, my family doesn't really do this sport or those hikes, but uh, one of my brothers, he was uh, doing a spelunking. Mm -hmm. So he invited me to uh, to try to do that. But after that, after I did that course, I keep doing uh, different, um, we can say, little spelunking expeditions without him. Well, you know, a lot of people that, that we talk to here really um, have a sense that s even early on, somehow, there's something about the mountains that really hits them in the heart, and hmm. that it's, it's hard to to kind of move away from that. Not that they would want to move away, but that they know that it's it's in them somehow. Is that true mm -hmm. for you? Um, the beginning, uh, that touching thing, uh, maybe was the mountain, but uh, it was more the people. Mm. Um, I start like doing things and getting like attracted to uh, I don't like to say risky uh, stuff, but uh, kind of uh, that idea of adventure things, because you don't know what's after. That for me, it's the definition of adventure. That why why going to Everest right nowadays is not an adventure. You already know what's going right. to happen. But those little trips with, where you don't know what will happen with friends, that for me was the magic word. Right. Uh, make that, that thing special different to the rest of the things I tried before. Uh, I've been doing kayaking, competing on that, athleticism, different kind of always sports. But this one had something special. And the relation with my friends was the special thing. Right. Besides the mountain. But I think I discovered the magic of the mountain after. Well, I think for most people, it has to be kind of a package. You need, yeah. you need to have the um, the relationship with others, which climbing is so good at doing because we're connected by a rope. Yeah. And then, um, for sure, the the history of things, the you know, the power of of the stories of these places, mm -hmm. but also the risk. So you you said yeah. a second ago, you don't want to say that it's the risk. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, just, is that because you've experienced other games like kayaking and there was risk in that, but that just didn't grab you the same way? No, I don't like to use that word. Uh, it's very easy to use it in a sensationalist way. Right. And I don't like it because of that. I w I'm very careful using it. Like, every time I use it, I need to describe the situation so people doesn't take it on the wrong way. Right. Um, but, yeah, there's a little bit of risk 
not so the when, way some people understand it. Right. One way I think about it that maybe you can just see if this works for you is that the mistake that people make sometimes is that they believe that risk is the point yeah. for us as yeah. opposed to the vehicle that takes us to get yeah. where we want. Yeah, exactly. Right. But I believe that a lot of people live with that in their different lives. Like, uh, I don't know, um, yeah. a broker <laughs> mm. has a lot of risk and I guess they have more uh, hearth attacks or more, uh, there's more people dying uh, right. <laughs> on that sport mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, what there is in uh, climbing. I mean, yeah, there's there's risk yeah. in different areas and different stages and different lives, um, styles of life. And, and it's something that you can assume and you can deal with it, like knowing how to uh, be as safe as possible. Right. So for a lot of people, it, um, the idea of mastering the risk, of, of learning how to control it and be on top of such a transparent risk mm -hmm. is, is really important. Is that true for you? I don't wake up one day, the day I'm going to do any kind of climb, I'm not waking up thinking, okay, I gotta control the risk that today. And the risk, no, that word is not going around my head. Um, I think about other stuff, about uh, the conditions uh, that I have to be careful. I don't know, many things like that, but uh, not labeling what I'm doing right. with the risk, even if it's there, as we say, that we assume it. Mm -hmm. But it, I don't want to stay on this too long, but at the same time, it seems like <laughs> <laughs> that risk is, is there and it's a useful vehicle, and a lot of people that, that I've talked to about it say that if they got rid of the risk entirely, then mm -hmm. the game wouldn't be as interesting or as enjoyable for them, but they'd never do the game if it was only risk, if there wasn't yeah. anything else there. Well, I will say the same, but using the word challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, if uh, the challenge is too easy, um, I will finish uh, that climb or I will finish that expedition, feeling a kind of empty hmm. because I need something that uh, makes me feel that I'm getting better and that I did some work. Right. And sometimes the hard thing is to find the project and the goal that fits your skills. Right. Because it takes, it has to take a while to choose what you want to do because if it's too hard, you don't fit on the team. Yeah. that, um, that um, it's working on, on that project. You may do it, but uh, then I will not feel I deserve it, I own it, because mm -hmm. I let other people lead all the, all the hard um, sections. So I don't wanna be in a project that is too difficult for me, but I don't wanna be in a project that is too easy because then I don't feel satisfaction. Right. And for a lot of people, that takes a kind of maturity of knowing both the environment and knowing yourself really well. Well, I think you need to be a little humble because it's very um, uh, attractive if somebody says, you know what, let's go to do the, like Wielinski, let's mm -hmm. go to the north side of uh, K2 in wintertime. Right. Yeah, you want to be on that. But that's not your level. Right. And, and it's to say, you know what, I'm not ready for that. So the not other, only being humble, but being honest with yeah, yourself. Yeah, too. I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess you are more right with that word. Yeah. The other day, some uh, was a friend that called me in and she wanted to climb with me one route on the north side of Eger. And I say, I would really love it because I tried Eger when I was 21 and I turned down because it was bad weather. And it's a mountain that I, someday I want to climb. And I thought like, wow, that will be perfect just going with her. But she will be leading all the heart, everything. Mm -hmm. I, I could do that uh, 10 years ago, just to get hooked in an expedition with right. other people working for me. But I don't, I don't feel like uh, I will deserve the summit. So w w for you, what do you think the path to that place has been of, of kind of learning yourself and learning that maturity? What, what kind of experiences have been really important in forming that in you? Um, I actually, I don't know how I get into this point. Probably, um, and I guess I'm going to go to that word many times in this uh, interview, my friends. Just mm -hmm. seeing how, looking, the things that you're doing or how they act or uh, 
admiring them by their principles. Mm -hmm. And then is when I, you think like, you know, I want to be like this. I yeah. want to be, what I admire on this guy, that he's honest. And I want to be like this. Probably that's what makes me um, grow to, to, to the level I'm right now, which is, I don't know which one it is. I mean, I, I, I guess I still have a lot, a lot of things to learn. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a really interesting comment because one of the continuing themes um, in this series and any conversations about climbing is the idea of, of mentoring, you know, somebody who, who really kind of helps show you the path. And mm -hmm. sometimes that doesn't have to be like an older person or it can just be with friends who yeah. choose sometimes to do something. Sometimes it's young people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That uh, I, I was, there's things that I can see in young people that it's like, I lost that. Mm -hmm. Once I have it and now I lost it. Why, why I lost, for example, I don't know why sometimes climbers, they get into that dark side that they have like envy and they start uh, criticizing mm -hmm. other uh, climbs or other people that they don't know. And that creates such a bad energy that it's like, when I'm in a group of people that they start doing that, I just, get out, I, I just move, I go wherever else, because it, it takes kind of bad energy. And, um, and I know they, it happens in all the, the communities. Sure. Um, but as some people believe that we're more prone to doing it for, and, and some people in climbing, I think, actually believe that they, they have to touch that darkness to be able to move to do the things that they do. Yeah. But it sounds like you don't yeah. see it that and, way. And a couple of years ago, I was climbing with this guy. I just met a very young guy who was at brilliant he is a brilliant rock climber and we spent like two or three days climbing together and he was so clean he didn't criticize anything he mm. was just he was pure right. in some way um and i was like really watching at that is like i want to go back to that thing i don't know what i remember i was like this when i was uh, young there were issues that were not part of us. Right. And after you grow, it's like sometimes you get to places that you don't know how you got there. So looking at young people also, there's things to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So it, I mean, interesting to hear you talk about that change that happens to people sometimes. We're vulnerable to those yeah. kind of influences. So yeah. what, what's kind of pushed you, do you think? Because I, I imagine in many ways, you know, you've, you've become a very well-known climber. Right? You're a woman. That changes some things for hmm. some people anyways. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. You've been in some pretty high profile situations like Everson 96 for sure and some of the things that followed after that. All of those kinds of things can be pressure to take you into a different place than some other people might go. Yeah. Um, the first thing, and I didn't want to interrupt your introduction when you did it, but I don't believe I'm such a good climber. And it's not, I'm not trying to be humble here. Um, it's, there's a lot of people doing what I do. Yeah. The thing is that I've been lucky, well, not lucky, because sometimes I think that was not a lucky thing. Um, I've been in touch with media or with documentaries or with whatever, so people know me instead of knowing other ones. But there's a lot mm -hmm. of really, really good climbers. Yeah, I mean, um, that was going to be my question for you is, is it, why do, why do I believe that then? And I think you've answered it in the sense that sometimes it's the media itself that generates the buzz yeah. and it blinds, blinds us to other people Me in yeah. our own community who we should know better. Yeah, media creates, uh, creates uh, how you will say, um, characters or uh, yeah. um, well, somebody that looks to the audience or to the public uh, like a great and unbelievable climber and uh, probably has an average level, which uh, that's what I consider I have. I'm not a bad climber, but I'm not an exceptional climber. Right. I well, can... let, me, let me put something else on the table because I think it's quite an interesting thing. When I was um, just reading some things about you to try and think about this interview, the other thing that comes up for you that might not come up for other people, and I wonder what it's like for you, is I, mean, I don't read any other place where somebody is described as being a model and a television host and all these kinds of things. I mean, that, that changes you mm -hmm. too, that people are going to look at you in a different kind of way. How, how do you feel about that? Well, those are works that I do, and I just consider them jobs. Okay. Like, uh, that's the way I pay the bills. <laughs> Does anybody give you a hard time about that? 
a hard time for uh, working on TV or doing documentaries or hosting a radio show? Or well, I just I just think it's interesting because you know. Well, in our there's... game, we try not to do the thing, for instance, of, um, you know, he's good looking or he's been in movies or he's done any of that kind of stuff. But Yeah, but he... if I can get a job modeling, why I shouldn't? Yeah, good for you. It's going to pay my bill or my next expedition. That's the first thing I think every time I get some kind of engagement. Mm -hmm. It's like, where will I, where will I go <laughs> with this money? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm seeing a, a mountain every time I... I have a I have a, an opportunity to do an an endorsement for for a product, so sure. I don't care about the others will say I'm sure there's going to be people criticizing, but um, it's envy and what I gotta do. Yeah, Pff, I yeah, don't good care. For you. That, I, think that's, <laughs> I don't care. I think that's really great that you can do it that way because I think it's the same kind of thing when when. Um, people look at women climbing. It, the question that often comes up is, should that make a difference? And I know you were on the panel here this week about um, you know, that issue with people talking about where are the women, why you know, are they as present in climbing as they should be, and if not, why? What's, what was your answer to that? I was like, um, the, the thing is, that question or that issue or that uh, idea, it's been there on and on and on and on. Yeah. And um, I guess it's time to move on. <laughs> that uh, um, I guess they, they didn't really get my point when I was saying that I don't like those female expeditions. But um, because it's like uh, if there is a female expedition from females that they know each other and they have been planning some trip each other for weeks or months or years, and they've been climbing each other because they are friends since a long time ago, that's the same thing I do or anybody does in a normal expedition with friends right. or teams. But, but women's I, not the issue, it's something, it's exactly, friendship that's the issue. Exactly, yeah. or yeah. the goals or what you share or uh, what's your project. But when it's something that it's commercial, and uh, for me it's faking, and right. uh, I don't share that idea. And also because sometimes um, they make those expeditions look more important, and that's media a game, right. more important that, and more interesting, and they try to sell us that what they are do doing is unique. Right. And uh, it's not a bad thing. I mean, they are doing the effort, and it's probably something very precious for them, but they're trying to sell me that what you're doing is unique because you're a woman doing it. Like going to show you a female expedition. Come on, it's been climbing thousands of hundreds of times. So big deal. So why, do you, that, why do you think women decide that they have to do that? Because it's quite a conscious guess, choice on some people's part. I guess it's just a way to get the money to go and do it. And that's not doing any good to that cause that we want to have that uh, be considered uh, like equal. Like, for example, there's a really good climber in Spain. It's called Silvia Vidal. Mm -hmm. She's doing. The big wall climber. Yeah. Well, when she climbs something, it's Silvia Vidal opened that route. It's not a woman opened that route. Right. So it's the name what it's considered. It's her as a right. climber. I think that's the the, the 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 objective, the goal that we need to to get. Not like woman expedition going to show you when you put that word in front. From my point of view. It's, uh, you are getting into a contradiction because then you don't get into the point that uh, uh, that we're, we've been fighting for. You know that that sets up some interesting things for yourself. Some women have decided these days that they want to go and climb only with women. That that's just easier. It, it gets rid of some of the issues that mm -hmm. get in the way. Yeah. And I've heard women say things, for instance, like. Um, if I climb with men, mm -hmm. people always assume that he does all the leading or that you know I'm, I'm second to him somehow. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you feel like that doesn't have to be the case. No, because I, as I said the other day on the panel, um, it's climbers. That's it. It's names, persons. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a female. It's like, a, so what? <laughs> yeah. And yet at the same time, you know that you're, you capitalize on it to a certain extent, right? I mean, you, you get media attention because of it. Yes, but I gotta tell you, 
that I know somebody in Spain who's a male, it's a, it's a, it's a man, who he gets, a, he does publicity also, because he works as a model. Right. He's doing that too, because he's good looking. Right. But it's, you know, it's interesting, of course, because the, the finger is going to be pointed more at you than it will be at him. And yeah, that's kind and of he's doing the same thing I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So let's take that thing off the table yes. and talk about um, some of the other experiences. Because for sure, I mean, you, you know, you can downplay your accomplishments, but the reality is that you've done some some really fascinating things. Not not necessarily better than anybody else, yeah. but in, in life still some pretty yeah, fascinating things. I mean, I'm proud of most of them, um, but that's a personal thing. And, and I guess that's the way it has to be put it. Like, uh, as I said, it's very... Legitim for uh, those women who climb to you to feel proud of it. Right. That's great. That's the way it has to be. Yeah. But I don't try to tell to the other people that's unique. That's what I'm not trying to tell the people that what I'm doing is unique because most of the time it's just uh, an average climb. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like that's pretty important to be clear about those kinds of things too when yeah. you speak about it? Yeah. yeah. I definitely think that, and I'm trying, but thing happens is that. Uh, most of the time, on uh, when I'm doing an interview, they don't listen to that. Right. So even if I'm telling them, I remember that when I came down from Everest, they were like, wow, thinking that was the most amazing thing. And I was like, look, that was just an average climb. We didn't really uh, contribute with anything on the climbing wall. It was an average climb to Everest. It yeah. was different about, we were shooting a documentary, that was something unique. Right. So I'm always trying to be very clear about the climbs I do. And if I ever do something unique and spectacular, I will say, I will point it, it's like, this is good. Yeah. A good, a good ascent, a good climb, a good, we did a good job. But when it's something that I, it's average, it's normal, it's fine, and it's well done, but not exceptional. I always say it. Well, we, we can't step past people's understandings, the limitations of their understandings, and I think in many ways the Everest thing is the same thing as the sex thing is, right? In, in that that's the way people understand the world, right? You're a woman, therefore that mm -hmm. makes a difference. It's Everest, therefore it's different, whereas mm -hmm. I know you've... Um, in things that you've written about, you've really struggled to try and explain to people that the attempts that you've made on K2 are more fundamental to your climbing experience than the successes that you've had on Everest. Main thing, it's the style. For me, style is very important. Uh, when we climb Everest, I was asking, I was telling them, I ever never climb with oxygen. I don't use oxygen. I don't like oxygen. Mm -hmm. But they say, well, this is a job. Right. And we are going to use oxygen. You have to use oxygen. Yeah. And I agree, because I agree to the job, and uh, I was considered that experience more than a climbing experience, um, a work with that documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, all the rest of expeditions I've done, they've been without Sherpas and without oxygen, and as light as possible. And I, I know, I, at least I know that what I reach, I reach by myself. Mm -hmm. So summit at all cost isn't isn't the way to approach it. No, mountain. no, that's yeah. why I don't like just grab a, I mean, I want to make sound very pretentious and I don't want to mm, look like that because uh, that's not what I believe. But I may summit many mountains that I didn't, just grabbing a rope, right. getting a jumer and having a Sherpa, putting my tent, carrying my sleeping bag, making my dinner, and I, the only thing I need to worry is about where I put my feet, or sometimes not even that. But where is the beauty of that? Mm -hmm. For me, it's not worth it, so... But there's an interesting contradiction for a lot of people whose lives are very much in the public light in climbing because mm -hmm. they, they have to do certain things to keep their name out there, to keep the sponsors coming, to keep their, li their climbing life going, but... Ultimately, it's a very, as Christoph Alicki said the other day, it's a very intimate, personal kind of thing, that mm -hmm. experience. So how do you balance those two things out? Well, um, I'm not judging what the others are doing. Like, I mean, everybody sure. has the right to choose their own way and the, the style and what they want to do. And I have to do something, so, some things for a sponsor or for uh, the media or for whatever. And I think the proof is that I've been trying, I don't know how many mountains, never or almost never by the normal route, and uh, most of them I never climb it. 
Yeah. Um, and and the, is there a cost for that in, in terms of your relationship with sponsors or your public presence, um, do you think? Until that point when I was having a sponsor, no. Because what I try to do is, uh, and I guess that's the, 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 the point on some media sensationalism. You can really talk about many things and make things very interesting without being uh, sensationalist. I think that's the easy way to do stuff. Yeah. You don't have to work. Hey, that's very easy just to sh show the blood, the, pl the, the pain. Um, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm, trying to find something interesting to say takes more time, takes more energy, takes more effort, uh, more documentation. And you can focus on that and make that look interesting. And as far as you have something to say that will attract the interest of uh, your sponsor or, or your public, doesn't matter if it's Summit or not. It's how good you are telling right. the story. You know, it's, it's, it's always easier, like you're saying, to tell the darker story because it's, it just grabs people right away. And it's yeah. a lot harder to tell the positive, strong, emotional, spiritual kinds yeah. of stories. And I, that's why I don't have a sponsor since a long time ago. I mean, well, not, it's not, that's not why I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating here. Um, I mean, I had the sponsors and um, I was not uh, succeeding on, on an expedition and coming down was okay because I did some job for them and they were happy even mm -hmm. without the summit. But somehow I feel like uh, you have to be um, excusing yourself sometimes. So I decided that I will do less expeditions to a lower mountains, maybe harder. Uh, mountains, uh, but short trips. Mm -hmm. So since uh, five or six years ago, I don't have, uh, uh, I don't look for the sponsors for the expedition. Even if I've been, actually it was uh, to Kanchen and uh, to all those mountains, just paying the expedition from my pocket. Right. But uh, in a way it's like uh, more relaxing, not because the sponsor, I gotta tell you, more because the media, because somehow they judge you. And right. it's like, do I really need that? Do I really want that? Like, not really. Yeah, and for a lot of climbers, it's it's very much or adventurers of any kind. It's a double-edged sword, right? There's a there's a positive to getting that kind of coverage and the sponsorship, but it's outweighed for a lot of people by the negative side of it. Yeah. So one of the one of the questions that a lot of um, people who see the lives of adventurers and a lot of adventurers have about successful lives of adventurers is how do you do it then if you're not if you don't have to turn to sponsorship how do you make a go of what you're doing um, I'm not really preparing my life I don't know what I'm going to do in two months um, but I work a lot at doing conferences for companies to get in into different points like motivational speaking kind of thing yeah but yeah. sometimes it's like talk, I'm talking about innovation not about motivation mm. so uh, right. I'm getting to different points or about uh, change management or that kind of stuff um, I work in the, in the different uh, shows on the radio sometimes on TV just showing documentaries always related to the things I know I mean I'm not going to do uh, TV shows that don't talk about uh, sport, wilderness, or things like that. Even recently, I got a, a, a re request for a, a presenting a sex show on TV. And I was like, what? It's like, because I climb Everest, do you really think I'm able to do whatever? It's like, well, no, a, lot not, of, a lot of climbers would think that about <laughs> themselves, yes. But. Yeah, but it's like, I'm trying to be kind of uh, following a line. And... Um, and now I'm working in, in that project that I guess will be someday uh, paying some bills, <laughs> which is uh, drawing this uh, children's book. And hmm. we'll see how that will turn in a few years. Yeah. I mean, is that part of your role, do you think, to, to kind of motivate other people through your own experience? Is that is something that's important to you? Well, I don't know if that's... Uh, maybe there's, there's something inside my brain um, that was <laughs> inside my head telling me that I had, that, that it would be neat if I will draw those uh, stories for children. And uh, I don't really know the reason. Maybe I will find out in a few years why I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but it's interesting you say that because it sounds like that's kind of your explanation of your climbing as well. It's something you don't necessarily know beforehand what it's going to mean to you, but the journey itself is part yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, every t not every time, but uh, after there's a special days. Uh, I remember, like, uh, when was that? This summer that I went back to the Pyrenees. Uh, I, I'm near by a... Um, um, well, a range of uh, the, those range of mountains. There's a little valley, a valley that I used to go pretty often, and I have a friend who owns a, a hut there. So uh, I used to go up there and visit him, and then we go for a climb. And there's special days, and some of, the, of those days you are not expecting it will be something spectacular or different, but those days makes the difference. And I don't know why those days that uh, they add a little bit of the sense or of the meaning right. of what we are doing. And sometimes there's not words to explain it. You just finish your climb feeling that you are the luckiest person in the world and, uh, and that just being alive is a treasure. Yeah. And that gives a little bit of the sense you are doing. And this happens after 20 years climbing or more. So maybe after 20 years drawing, I will understand why I'm doing it. Yeah. But um, yeah. I just feel I want to do it. And I'm trying it. Excellent.